Good evening and welcome to St Andrew's Evening Prayer, St Andrew's Church in Hortonley Skern in Darlington. And today it's the 9th of February. So welcome, welcome to this time together. I'm going to be reading three readings this evening. Genesis 1, starting at verse 20, reading through to Genesis 2, the first part of verse 4. All of Psalm 8 and Mark 7, verses 1 to 13. And most of the service I'll be following the evening prayer booklet. So let's start by saying our words from Deuteronomy. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. And our opening sentence is, The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So let's just spend a little bit of time just saying sorry where we need to and saying thank you where we need to as we talk to God. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may rest with, with may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. And I'm going to read our Genesis uh, reading first this evening, and following that, I'm going to read Psalm 8 straight away. So Genesis 1, starting at verse 20. And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and everything living and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that he had all God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. But the seventh day God had fin by the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that all that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. And I'm going to read Psalm 8. Psalm 8, starting at verse 1. Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe 
and the Avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, and the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human, be human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all the flocks and herds and the animals in the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. And indeed it is, isn't it? Our first reading was about creation, wasn't it? And then in our second reading here, the psalmist is taking a moment to wonder over that creation, the moon and the stars and all of the creatures given as a gift of love. Now we know that God is omnipotent. He could have just said, let everything exist, and it would have done. But then I thought about that and why he didn't, and I, I was mindful of the people that I know that make handmade, make handmade gifts for people. And isn't it wonderful when we get something that's been made with love and care? And God created the universe one step at a time with care and with love. And God declared it good. And a couple of other things I thought about was when I stand at night and look at the stars, people that know me know it drives me mad because I just can't cope with the size and the absolute vastness of it. So I am filled with awe and wonder really. And at times I realise that I want to put God into a box so that I can control him, that I'm in charge, not him. Which is really bad. And then the other thing that when I look at the stars on the night, and then I'm praying and I realise that the God who just spoke creation into being is the same God that listens to me and listens to you when we bring our prayers before him. He loves us and he knows each one of us by name. And that again is amazing. And I just want to finish this section by using the prayer for today from the Church of England. It um, goes along nicely in this point in our prayer evening. But let's just pray this. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person, that we, that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we come to our scripture reading. Our gospel reading tonight is from Mark, starting to read at chapter 7, verse 1. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions such as the washing of cups, pitchers and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. And he continued, you have a fine way of setting aside the commandments of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, Honour your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares what might have been used to help their father or mother is Corban, that is, devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And you do many things like that. Now, in previous weeks I've had a few readings about the um, Pharisees where they've been pointing out to Jesus the laws. And Jesus has been pointing out that the laws had been, become so complicated and detailed that they'd really become too impractical for anyone to follow. 
And in this reading, the issue is the disciples eating without washing their hands. And in response to that statement, Jesus quotes a passage from Isaiah, telling the disciples, although they honour God with their lips and words, their hearts aren't in union with him. They've put those petty regulations above the law of God, above the law of love and compassion. For the Pharisees, following the law was everything. Compared to the law, people were insignificant. And we might look at the Pharisees, mightn't we, and just think, well, you know, we're right. We're, sorry, we're right to look at them and just think that they've got it wrong. How could they be so misguided? But then I think, how do I make my decisions? Am I true to God? Am I swayed by external influ influences? Or how often are we distracted by the little things in order to admit or deal with the real problems that we have or that we need to deal with? And I know that I can be, like the Pharisees, judgmental. And that's something I'm not proud of. Jesus isn't saying, is he, that the law isn't important, but what he is saying here is it's the law of love that should reign in our lives. And let's say the glory at this point. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. So we turn to our time of prayers and I'm going to leave some spaces in between the prayers this evening for you to add your own. And there is a response to the first part of the prayers. I'm using the prayers from our um, prayer leaflet as we continue to pray for the effects of coronavirus. So if I say, Lord, hear us, if you'd like to join in with Lord, graciously hear us. So let us pray. Let us pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety. We pray for those who are, who are affected by the coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies. We pray that they may make wise decisions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for doctors, nurses and medical researchers that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, we pray that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And Lord, we pray too for our young people. The media is constantly telling them that they're failing, that they're behind in their work. They're telling them that their job prospects will suffer, that they will have mental health issues. Lord, we ask that the media report the positive things, how hard our young people are working, the resilience that they're developing. So we pray for protection over each one of them, Lord, whatever their age, and ask that you will clear the path before them as they strive to do their best and, they, and as they face tricky days, Lord. But we thank you for each one of them. Lord, 
Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. And we commend ourselves and for all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, Lord, we bring before you those people we know who are ill or suffering in pain, in need of any kind. And we lift before you particularly those people on our prayer sheet for Rebecca, John, Leslie, Douglas, Violet and Susan. And in the pause, Lord, we pray for those known to us personally. And we pray that you will comfort all who are grieving and missing those loved ones, Lord. And we think today for the families and friends of Carol Pearson, James Robson and Rini Goff. And also for Nancy's family and friends. And we lift to you Jay and Gillian. And Gillian's dad died this morning. Lord, from our prayer sheet, we pray for John and Helen Mulholland. We thank you for them and their family, Lord, and the service that um, those young people have given to St Andrews through jam and in other ways. We thank you that as they are young adults now, they are setting off on their own paths, and we just pray for protection over them, and also for John and Helen, Lord be with them and we pray for the people who live in Newport Court, Court and Nightingale Avenue and we pray for the streets that are occupied by our church family Lord who are, who are outside our parish boundaries we pray for each of these homes and ask for your blessing upon them we ask that you will strengthen relationships and a sense of community. And for each person that we've mentioned, Lord, we pray that your hand will be upon their lives, that our thoughts and words for them are full of faith in you. Merciful Father, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain, knowing that wherever danger threatens, your everlasting arms will be there to hold us safe. Comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with each of us in, in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's unite in saying together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we're coming together to the end of our time together. But just before we start with our concluding words, um, you might or might not be aware that we're running a Bible course um, on a Wednesday evening at St Andrews through Zoom. And we had our first one last week and it was really good. So if you would like to join us tomorrow night, um, get in touch with me, get in touch with Mark or somebody that you know from church and ask 
um, to be added onto that list and you'll get a Zoom invitation. If you've not used Zoom, it's easy to use. Um, I, I was really impressed by the material and the videos that we watched. So do give it a go. So let's say our concluding words. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you, O Lord, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. And I found a different blessing for this evening. It's um, a night blessing from a man called Malcolm Duncan. So I'm going to use that for us all this evening. May our rest be deep, our strength be renewed, and our soul be stilled by our, be stilled. May our weariness be washed away by grace, and our faith be restored by God's mercy. Tomorrow is a fresh start. Amen. So thank you for being with me this evening and I do hope you have a blessed evening. Um, evening prayers will be tomorrow as usual but I say if you want to join the Bible course just let somebody know and give it a whirl. So thank you.